All right, Jeff. Hey, how's it going, man? Looks like you're in the lab. What you got cooking today? Oh, man, cooking some new stuff, uh, man. I guess people have to wait to uh, find out about it on allamericansubs.com. Oh, that's that's where it will go. So stay tuned. That's all American stuff subs.com. A L L S A L L A M E R I C A N S U P P S dot com. Anyway, there you go. uh you know, it'd be interesting to talk today because last week we covered about Crealkalin and we know it's the pH correct creatine monohydrate. And actually it's funny, a question came up after that where people are talking about pH. And I really don't think people understand what that is. We all, you know, in high school or even in grade school chemistry, you talk about pH, but I don't think people really know what that is, why it's important, and like yep. why, why does it even matter, especially for a supplement like creatine. So I'll start, you know, let's yeah. dive right in. Yeah. We're live. Let's talk about it. Yeah, I thought it'd be a good, good, good subject. I mean, I, I think we all have had some experience in, you know, high school uh maybe junior high chemistry, biology, where you heard the word pH, you know, but it's really, it's the important um, importance of everything, uh, including life. You know, our blood needs to be maintained at a certain pH in order for us to live. Um, so again, you know, it's really important, but one of the things people always try to figure out is what, what is pH? What does it stand for? And uh, funny enough, it stands for the power of the hydrogen ion. Kind of like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or potential. And it's, 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 and I know down this up and down the scale, every time you move one, it's tenfold. Yep. So if you went well, from it like is. pH six to four or four to six, that's a hundredfold. Yeah. Basically, the pH of the solution is the negative logarithm of the high hydrogen ion concentration. Right. You want the chemical, it's pH equal, equals log H plus. Um, anyhow. Too much yeah, that, that hurts my head. <laughs> yeah, one times 10 to the minus seventh molar, you know, yeah, in a exactly. neutral solution. But um, but the pH scale, basically, when, when we talk about pH in food or chemistry, we typically go from zero to 14 or 15. You know, um, that is the typical range. And different things happen at different pHs. You know, different foods are different pHs. And one of the things that kind of prompt this is, you know, as you said, last week, our show was about uh, really busting the myth of these old um, studies that have lingered yeah. out there. We gave facts that they were false. And of course, people then comment. Um, and you always get these armchair quarterbacks who, folks, little advice don't comment on something that you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> it kind of makes you look dumb. Um, keep your opinions to yourself. Uh, you know, uh, Brian and I, we always give facts. Uh, we don't give opinions. Uh, where, where can you get opinions, Brian? Watch the news, right? They are anywhere. Turn on CNN, yeah. Fox, whatever. You're going to get a myriad of them instead of actual news. What, what do they call those guys? Analysts? <laughs> yeah. If you want to call them. I, I have some other names for them, but we'll keep this clean. Yeah. So anyhow, this gentleman went on to comment that, oh, okay, well, you know, so the studies are fake, but, you know, you can't, uh, it's dangerous for Crealkalin to be pH 14. You can't eat pH 14. You know, you guys don't know what you're talking about. So again, stupid comment, you know, nothing what you're talking about, but let's address that. You know, again, if it were put in a question, which we've had that question over the years, hey, how can somebody eat something pH 14? I thought that something that basic would be dangerous. So let's start at the middle of the scale, pH seven, that's neutral. Right. Typically water is neutral um, or used to be neutral. Now that you know we put chlorine and we put all these things, water is actually slightly acidic uh, yeah. to keep bacteria and stuff from growing. Correct. So as we lower the pH scale, as the number decreases, it becomes more acidic. So my answer to that question, I basically say hydrochloric acid, which is one of the nastiest acids we use here in a lot of chemical synthesis, it will burn right through your skin, put a hole through your hand. It, it eats through a lot of stuff. It's pH 3.1. Now, you could not drink that. You would die instantaneously. I mean, you wouldn't want to do that. But orange juice is pH 3.0. So how can you drink a pH 3.0, well, it depends on, is it food grade science or is it chemistry? 
And the same thing if we go up the scale, as we go above seven and the number increases, we call that basic. And when you get to caustic chemicals that are pH, you know, 12, 13, 14, um, eat right through your skin. But how can you then eat crealcaline that's pH 14? Again, food grade chemistry. You know, there are food grade substances that we can raise or lower the pH um, that are completely safe. But at the same token, there are chemicals that we would use in chemical manufacturing that will burn right through metal that you would never want to ingest. Right, right. Well, and similarly, I guess another way to look at it is you think of like a soda, like a, a Coca-Cola. Yeah. That's extremely acidic. Yeah. But an actual chemical and a, a true acid chemical, not food, would be absolutely detrimental. Blow your stomach out <laughs> and, and if you pour right. it on your skin and burn it. Yeah. And, and, you know, look at look at a soda, Coke or Pepsi. They use phosphoric acid. Now, there's two types of phosphoric acid. Um the food grade phosphoric acid, um, you wouldn't want to drink it straight. You know, it would burn your throat. But when we put it into a solution to lower the pH, we're not using very much. Right. Um, but there is a phosphoric acid that, again, will eat right through metal. I mean, it's nasty, but that's chemically, that's a pure reagent grade phosphoric acid. Same thing with, you know, hydrochloric acid. There are different um uh, different levels and different grades and different strengths. But mostly what we use in the food industry or the supplement industry to lower the pH is, you know, citric acids and malic acids. And again, if you were just to eat that stuff raw and pure, um, it, it would burn yourself. But remember, uh, what are those sour gummies? The yeah. reason why they're sour is they roll them in citric acid. Now that's a powder. So it's not like a pure acid. It's made to enhance uh, tartness, which again, enhances flavor systems. Now, typically we don't use basic technology in foods because we need to lower pHs in order for all these preservatives to work. So most all food items are a lower pH below seven. So we really created this food grade technology when we developed crealcalin. You know, again, it happens during the synthesis process where we're able to elevate that pH. So there really isn't a whole lot of food grade stuff. Now, certain minerals um, are, you know, pH eight uh, max, you know, so again, if you're gonna have, um, you know, a chelated magnesium, you know, again, slightly higher pH, uh, a citrated magnesium, it's gonna be a lower pH, a carbonate or phosphate magnesium is gonna be, a, a, you know, slightly alkaline pH. So again, there are ways of manipulating things using different types of technology. Uh, but again, that's that's food science, you know, uh, yeah. pretty, pretty known in the food and supplement industry. Yeah. Well, if you go full circle back to Crowclin, which obviously right. we're, we've been talking about off and on here is so to get to that level of pH, the key to that is the patent. And yes. how I guess we'll say how little of these compounds or ingredients you're using to, to achieve that, that still no one has absolutely, they've never been able to figure it out. And they're very confused that how can this basically register at 99.9% .9 pure yep. creatine monohydrate and still have that buffering effect? Well, and when my, you know, when we started synthesizing creatine monohydrate here in Billings back in the mid nineties, um, one of the catalysts was hydrochloric acid. So we were lowering the pH because that's what you would do to make creatine monohydrate. Creatine monohydrate ends up coming out, you know, six, 6.2. Right. Um, HCL is gonna be much lower. That's why that isn't very stable because again, you're reacting it with hydrochloric acid, gonna bring the pH down. Well, I started experimenting with different catalysts, different um, intermediates, and we were actually raising the pH and I was getting a, a, a pure product, but the pH was, was too high. So I then had to adjust the pH in the reactor to get it down. So when I discovered later on about the whole um, instability of creatine to creatinine, I remembered that I had all these chemical processes where I was actually raising the pH in the reactor. And we just went back to uh, that technology. And that's what led to commercially available crealcaline. But, you know, when you look at the patents, you know, somebody, a lot of people always say, well, it's just baking soda. You know, 20 years ago, you could be very vague on patents. You just had to right. give one way of doing it. And of course, baking soda, pH 8, 
that'll raise the pH of anything that you mix it with. But you can't, you can't make baking soda higher than pH eight in its pure form. And go try to mix a, a little bit of baking soda in some water. Uh, you'll throw up in, you know, probably uh, less than a minute. I mean, it's nasty. So again, it isn't, you know, adding a whole bunch of stuff like we do to foods. This is again, during the reaction process, we're able to elevate that pH. Uh, this is a chemical. So what we're using in that, that process, you could never eat. You can't eat sarcosine, will kill you. You can't eat cyanamide, will kill you. Yeah. But when you know what you're doing on a chemistry level, you take nasty things, you react them, you uh, precipitate crystals, and there you go. You got crealkaline, and all of a sudden the pH is elevated. Right. Well, and, and I think the other point people might miss when we talk about like the HCL, the more acidic uh, creatines, is all creatine starts its life as creatine monohydrate. And you're actually doing yep. a, a secondary reaction with uh, yep. hydrochloric when you're putting those together you're causing a reaction which actually creates yep. a new compound and which is why it's not pure whereas exactly. if you can't figure out going the other way with what we do we're not going to name all the specifics but right. you can get an almost pure product that's still creating monohydrate but has the added buffering um, yep. exactly into it and that's where people kind of lose it and they think no no i use this other stuff well you don't know the purity of it because it's not no, HCL is usually 30, 40, 30% max creatine. The rest is hydrochloric acid. It's a salt. Um, and again, you know, we know in food science that you lower the pH, things go in the solution better. And that's, that's why they did it for creatine HCL was to basically say, oh, if we put 50 grams in eight ounces of water or 100 grams, it's going to be soluble. Well, no, no kidding, man. I can make just about anything soluble if I lower the pH. That's how we make ready to drinks. You know, carbon RTDs are completely soluble, where when you mix the powder up yourself, there's going to be some settling out. Well, what's the difference is the pH is much lower in those RTDs than they are in the powder, just because we, we have to control that to um, keep it soluble and to keep microbes and such from growing, you know? Right, right. Um, oh, I'm alive and getting calls. <laughs> ah. So, anyway, you know, really that, that's the whole just of pH. I mean, it's very important in foods for taste, for preservatives. Um, Crealkaline, obviously, very important for stability. Um, but this is all this is all science. This is all chemistry. It's complex stuff. It right. isn't as easy as what a lot of times people think. Um, or, you know, again, like the guy saying, oh, you know, you're killing people. You can't eat a pH 14. That, that would, you know, you die. You're lying. <laughs> yeah yeah that stuff we've heard over and over and over the years it doesn't, doesn't seem like it's as much but there's always like you said that new guy that feels like they're the first person to find that stupid study yeah. or some other smoking gun that's going to take this whole thing down and destroy crealkaline for whatever reason they feel like yeah. they're doing i don't know maybe they feel like they're doing something good but anyway <laughs> same well, old same old do you remember uh i mean you know people drink drink sodas all the time and it doesn't kill you but i saw and i actually did it too where You'll take a bolt and you'll just oh. soak it in uh, Pepsi or Coke. Yeah, or a penny. A penny. I mean, after 30 or 60 days, it'll actually dissolve the whole thing. I mean, you know, yeah. but it, ta it takes a long time for that to happen. Now, I don't know what happens to your inside when you drink it, you know, 10 yeah. Cokes a day. I mean, you know, <laughs> there are people that do it, <laughs> but, you know, but again, it's not going to kill you, uh, you know, drinking some. So, <laughs> right, right. Okay. Well, I guess if anyone else has any questions or needs some kind of clarification, if yeah. you didn't, you can always reach out, comment on this, uh, on this or email Dr. Jeff. Uh, what, give me your email, I guess, like you always do. Yeah, it's uh, drj, Dr. J at allamph.com. And, you know, again, since we've been sort of talking about creatine in the last couple of weeks, if you want one of my books on creatine, um, I'll send you one absolutely free. And uh, give you a little education just about creatine um, and just about anything else. I think I got about 30 books out there. So <laughs> you'll have to do some research if yeah. you want to find one that you might want. Yeah. Well, and if you go to allamericansubs.com, there's a lot of them there on there. download. They're, they're free yep. digital download. So there you oh, go. There you go. All right. Cool. All right. Well, on that note, we'll go ahead and sign this off and let everybody get back to whatever they're doing. And we'll catch All up right. next week.